It's antimicrobial effects of copper in drinking water. So we are basically testing the effect of copper vessels that are used for storage of water in uh, most of the Asian and African countries. Uh, it has been used since quite a long time, since ancient times. And now we are basically trying to get into the microbiology of it. So we have tested quite a few bugs. Uh, most of them cause the usual waterborne diseases such as Salmonella, Vibrio and uh, we have successfully shown that they get inactivated within 24 hours of storage in the copper vessel. We haven't got down to the field studies yet. That could be a objective of a further study. Uh, but as of now, I'm just doing the laboratory work. This for starters, we have cholera, diarrhea, gastroenteritis. Uh, uh, there are all of these diseases that are very prevalent, the waterborne diseases, in, uh, especially in India, where getting clean water is a big uh, handicap for most of the villagers. So what we are trying to propagate is the idea of getting the water from a natural source, storing it overnight in a copper vessel and then consuming it. Uh, it's not going to have a very huge effect as in like, you know, it will reduce the disease incidence by 80% or 70%. But yes, we do need to target the population that are used to having water from ponds or from lakes or from any kind of natural resources. And it will be beneficial to them, especially to the children whose immune system is not developed, children under five years of age. So if they are to, you know, drink the water that is not very heavily contaminated, but yes, it will definitely have a beneficial effect for them. And then we have studied a lot of other parameters like the water quality, effect of temperature, pH, uh, the constituents that are present like organic, inorganic matter, uh, the different bugs uh, ranging from bacteria to fungus. Uh, we have tested uh, animal models to check if the bacteria that are inactivated in copper can cause a disease once they get into a normal host. Uh, one third of global fish production comes from aquaculture and it also gives a significant economic benefit in any countries of the world. But there are some drawbacks like outbreaks of diseases is the main drawback and we have to eliminate these pathogens, we have to get rid of these diseases, then we can get good aquaculture product, good fish product. Last year uh, with the help of engineering workshop we, ha we made a reactor which is uh, consist of a reservoir, a plate, and a collector of water. And the plate is uh, the glass plates, which is coated with titanium dioxide. And what we have to do, um, the contaminated water will flow through the reactor under full sunlight. And then for, like, say for 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes. And after that, I, I each time I collected the sample after 10 minutes. And then uh, I do the experiments in the lab that how much, uh, how much organisms are died or not. Is it injured or dead? So this is the thing. Like I'm using hatchery organisms, mainly fish pathogens. And uh, one is uh, Vibrio harvey, which is prawn pathogen. And these are, antibiotic resistant as well so we like normally in aquaculture system uh, what we use we use antibiotics to eliminate these pathogens or these diseases but uh, it leaves residues in it so and it goes to the food chain and it, it causes and like health risk so we need a new approach to disinfect the pond water or hatchery water aquaculture that water uh, which has no side effect and because we are using titanium dioxide, titanium dioxide is not toxic and it doesn't react with water so there is no effect.